the topic of this screencast is how to convert a temperature from degree Celsius to degree Fahrenheit and vice versa. We will begin by plotting the temperature in degree Celsius versus the temperature in degree Fahrenheit on a graph. So we have plotted the y axis and the x axis and degree Fahrenheit is on the x axis, degree Celsius is on the y axis. Now we are aware that the freezing point of water at one atmosphere we know that it is 0 degree Celsius and we know that this degree Celsius temperature also corresponds to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words the freezing point of water at one atmosphere pressure is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Therefore when we go to the graph we are aware that if I plot the point whose x coordinate is 32 and whose y coordinate is 0 this point definitely belongs to the graph so maybe I'll show 32 degrees Fahrenheit over here and write 32 over here and if I look at this particular point then the y coordinate is 0 degrees Celsius so the coordinates of this particular point are 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 0 degrees Celsius and hence this point belongs to the graph. Now there is another uh, well known point of the graph and that corresponds to the boiling point of water at one atmosphere pressure. In degree Celsius we are aware that water boils at 100 degree Celsius when the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. Now in degrees Fahrenheit the corresponding temperature is known to be 212 degrees Fahrenheit and so when I go back to the graph maybe this point will correspond to 212 degrees Fahrenheit and maybe 100 degrees Celsius I'll have it somewhere over here I suppose and so the point 212 degrees Fahrenheit comma 100 degrees Celsius belongs to the graph and that point will be somewhere over here so I'll mark this point and we know that the graph is definitely going to pass through this point and similarly it is definitely going to pass through this point. Now the degree Celsius and degree Fahrenheit scale have been defined in such a way that the graph of degree Celsius versus degree Fahrenheit temperature is a straight line. In other words when I am going to complete this graph I am going to draw a line which passes through these two points because I know that these two points belong to the graph. Now if I complete this right angle triangle this is a right angle triangle I know that the height of the right angle triangle in these units degree Celsius units is of course 100 degree Celsius and the base of the right angle triangle in the given units will be 212 minus 32 which is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Now from the diagram it should be clear that when the temperature rises from 32 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words when the temperature increase in Fahrenheit is 180 the corresponding temperature increase in Celsius is 100 degrees Celsius and because this is a straight line the rate at which the degree Celsius temperature rises and the rate at which the degree Fahrenheit temperature rises that is going to bear a constant relation. In other words if I divide this by 100 I ought to divide the 180 degrees Fahrenheit by 100 so what I get is a temperature rise of 1 degree Celsius I'll just write degree Celsius over here corresponds to a temperature rise of 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the relationship that we are going to use to derive our algebraic relationship between degree Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. The other possibility is you divide both these temperature rises by 180 so what I would get then is a temperature rise of 1 degree Fahrenheit corresponds to a temperature rise of 100 divided by 180 degrees Celsius which reduces to 5 by 9 degrees Celsius and of course 1.8 uh, degrees Fahrenheit would then be 9 upon 5 
degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll write it as a fraction here. 9 divided by 5 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the relationship or these two are the relationships which I will use to derive the equation between degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. So just to repeat, this is my relationship between temperature increases in degrees Celsius and degree Fahrenheit. So for example, if the temperature rises by 1 degree Celsius, then it will have risen by 9 by 5 degrees Fahrenheit. On the other hand, if the temperature rises by 1 degrees Fahrenheit, then automatically we can conclude that it must have risen by 5 upon 9 degrees Celsius. Now let us imagine a situation where we know that the Celsius temperature is X. In other words, the temperature is known to be X degrees Celsius and we wish to know what is the corresponding degrees Fahrenheit temperature. So as a first step, we write the temperature of X degrees Celsius as 0 degrees Celsius plus a temperature rise of X degrees Celsius. I mean for example supposing that X is 102 degrees Celsius. So basically what I'm doing is I'm expressing 102 degrees Celsius as 0 degrees Celsius plus 102 degrees Celsius above 0 degrees Celsius. So this is a temperature rise and this is my starting point. So I, I just write this x degree Celsius again over here. x degree Celsius and now I want to convert the right hand side to degrees Fahrenheit. I am aware that 0 degrees Celsius corresponds to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's clear from the graph. So this corresponds to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's my starting temperature. Plus, now a temperature rise of x degrees Celsius. I have to convert that into a temperature rise in degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to use uh, this relationship. I know that when the temperature rises by 1 degree Celsius, it has risen by 9 upon 5 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just ratio and proportion. So the temperature rise in degrees Celsius, when I multiply it by 9 upon 5, I get the corresponding rise in degrees Fahrenheit. So if my temperature rises or if the temperature rises by x degrees Celsius, clearly it must have risen by 9 upon 5 degrees Fahrenheit into x, sorry, multiplied by x degrees Fahrenheit. So x degrees Celsius corresponds to 32 degrees Fahrenheit plus an additional temperature rise of 9x by 5 degrees Fahrenheit and I can put it all together and I can write my final equation as follows. I get x degrees Celsius equals 32 plus 9 by 5 times x degrees Fahrenheit. Just to verify uh, whether we have got the correct relationship, let's put x here as 100. So this becomes 100 degrees Celsius. Now that will be equal to 32 plus 9 by 5 multiplied by 100 into 100. So of course the 5 and 100 cancel and I get 20 and 9 and 20 I can combine them and I can write 180 this many degrees Fahrenheit and clearly 32 plus 180 which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the corresponding Fahrenheit temperature to 100 degrees Celsius we already know that so this is a verification of what we have done now of course some people they uh, remember this expression or derive this expression in a slightly different form they don't write x degrees Celsius they say the Celsius temperature is C so maybe I'll write C in place of x so C degrees Celsius will equal what I have here is 32 plus 9 into C divided by 5 degrees Fahrenheit and the way that they do it is they want to find the relationship they want to I mean if the temperature in Celsius is called C degree Celsius then they call the corresponding temperature in Fahrenheit F 
degrees Fahrenheit and they try to establish a relationship between this number C and this number F. For example, uh, we are aware that when C is equal to 100, F must be equal to 212 or we are aware that when C is equal to 0, then F must be equal to 32. So in a sense, they are trying to derive a relationship between these two numbers C and F without even involving the unit degree Fahrenheit and the unit degree Celsius in the final equation. Now if you look closely at this relation which we have derived, C degree Celsius is equal to 32 plus 9C by 5 degrees Fahrenheit. You compare it with this relationship. Clearly this number F which I have written before degrees Fahrenheit that must correspond to this bracket over here which I have written before degrees Fahrenheit. So what can I write now? I am going to equate this particular number with F and so what I write is F is equal to 32 plus 9C divided by 5. So that's another way of expressing the relationship. Both ways are equivalent. You can write it in this way or alternatively you can write it in this way. They mean one and the same thing. Now for example, if you look at this equation, let's see what happens when we substitute C equal to 100. So what I get is F equals F equals 32 plus 9 upon 5 into 100 which upon calculation yields 212. Now that means that when C is 100, F is 212 which we know to be correct. So we have verified the correctness of this particular equation at least in one particular case. Now converting a degrees Fahrenheit temperature into degrees Celsius is going to be quite easy based on what we have already done. So let's imagine that we know that the temperature is y degrees Fahrenheit and we want to find the corresponding degree Celsius temperature. So I write y degrees Fahrenheit as 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's my starting point. I use this starting point because I know 32 degrees Fahrenheit corresponds to 0 degrees Celsius. So I'll be able to convert this part easily into degrees Celsius plus now the temperature difference which I must add to 32 is y minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. You can check when I add these two, I will get y degrees Fahrenheit. So a starting temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit plus a, an additional temperature difference of y minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now of course y degrees Fahrenheit on the left hand side will be equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. I write it as 0 degrees Celsius. I know that's true. Plus now I go back to my relationship between temperature increases. This time I am going to use this relationship. I know that a temperature rise of 1 degree Fahrenheit corresponds to a temperature rise of 5 by 9 degrees Celsius and so a temperature rise of y minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit will correspond to a temperature rise of y minus 32 multiplied by 5 by 9 degrees Celsius and I get y degrees Fahrenheit equals y minus 32 into 5 by 9 degrees Celsius. Now as an example, let's imagine that the Fahrenheit temperature is 32. So I want to convert 32 degrees Fahrenheit into Celsius. So Y becomes 32. I just put this term over here as 32 and clearly this entire bracket will now reduce to 0. So what I'm, I get is 32 degrees Fahrenheit equals 0 degrees Celsius which I know to be true. So this is a verification of this equation in one particular case. Of course the second way to write the relationship is to write it in terms of the numbers F and C. So what I essentially want to do is I first write this relationship F degrees Fahrenheit equals C degrees Celsius and I want to relate these two numbers F and C. Now, if I compare this relationship with the relationship over here, clearly the number here y is actually f 
while the, this number in square brackets that is actually C so my relationship then uh, becomes C just look at the right hand side this C is equal to I won't write y minus 32 I'll write f minus 32 multiplied by 5 divided by 9 that's the second way to write the relation again you just verify if I put f equal to 32 and I know I get c equal to 0 and I know that c equal to 0 is right because 32 degrees Fahrenheit corresponds to 0 degrees Celsius is the second way of expressing the relationship.